in the lab, we're asked to take a uh, 50 milliliter round bottom flask and fill it up with five grams of benzo pinacol. So as usual, we use a wax weighing paper, crease it along the middle, and don't forget to tear the balance to remove that mass of filter paper. And I've got my uh, benzo pinacol here. Sprinkle this in and see what we got here. Now, as I mentioned in the uh, introductory video, you're not gonna have five grams. Uh, we're gonna use this mass and scale the appropriate amount of um, glacial acetic acid used in this procedure. So let me show you what mass we are using for benzo pinacol. Okay. Transfer that into our into our 50 milliliter round bottom flask guy here. Okay. All right. And for the acetic acid, we'll need to scale it down, right? Um, okay, so Scale that down and uh, we'll add the glacial acetic acid here. I need a couple crystals of iodine. So this is what they call prilled. Um, we have these little beads, very small little beads, like look like BBs, this gray color. So we're supposed to add one to three of these to the uh, flask. Uh, I'll add three. I've got three on the spatula. Okay. We'll put those in there. That was kind of weird. I wasn't sure. Uh, let me wash my hands. I got some iodine on it. Now we'll put in the scaled amounts of glycerol acetic acid here. You're asked to calculate that in the lab, so I'm not going to tell you what that amount is. But we'll go ahead and put that in here. Now, as far as safety information goes, glacial acetic acid is extremely, um, you know, bothersome to your nose. It's an inhalation hazard. Uh, it, uh, it's much more stronger than vinegar, okay? So again, this is just the reaction solvent. It doesn't matter too much. if we've got too much or too little by a bit, but there we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and add this to the uh, round bottom flask here that contains my benzophenone and three crystals of iodine, okay? So it's gonna change a little bit of a color, purplish color, when that uh, little crystal of iodine on the bottom there, a few of them dissolve, okay? so. Now we're asked to put this on a reflux condenser, get the water going, and uh, wait for it to dissolve, and then uh, we're gonna re reflux it for another five minutes. So let me bring the camera over here to the fume hood. I already heated this hot plate up very hot so we could get this going very quickly here. So here's my uh, reflux condenser. 
and it's uh, filled with water because I've already used it. So water goes in the bottom, comes out the top, and it's going to cool any vapors that come up there, okay? I forget what the boiling point of acetic acid is. I think I remember something like 130-ish or so. So we'll put this in contact with the, uh, the hot plate there. We'll get the water recirculating. Fortunately, it's right here in the fume hood. And you can see the color uh, developing there quite nicely as the iodine you know, dissolves. And the water is uh, dripping out. I don't, I don't think you can see it with the white background, but it's, it's a nice, gentle, very fine flow. Okay, and that's pretty much, uh, you know, kind of all you need there, okay? Um, the solid has not yet dissolved. We'll bring this up close to the uh, reaction here so you can take a look at it. So again, the iodine is just a catalyst. This nice color you're observing here has nothing to do really with the reaction. Uh, it's not it's not supposed to be a color um you know product or anything okay so there we go we've got it boiling um once again i had this on full high so this is really high refluxing right here um but we're just gonna let that go until it dissolves you can see some solids that are just kind of going around like so now remember iodine has a sufficient vapor pressure so iodine can also come up in here that's why this whole thing is changing a dark color um, we'll turn this down a bit and uh, we're just gonna let that go for five minutes once all of the solid has dissolved it has not yet dissolved yet according to my observation once it does we'll let this go for five minutes and I'll set up the uh, fast forward on the video okay okay all of the solid has dissolved so I'm gonna start the time now Okay, that was five minutes the procedure says now to cool this so we'll keep the water recirculating and uh, we'll turn this to the off position here and we'll um, raise this up here that's the nice thing about having a clamp on the bottom not the top but the bottom so you can very quickly and easily raise the reaction off the heating source I will let this cool for a bit until it's not boiling and super scalding hot then I'll transfer this to a beaker of water and cool it down to uh, room temperature. The procedure says your product should uh, precipitate out as a red um, paste. I put way too much iodine in there, I think, but it's fine, it'll uh, hopefully still work. Uh, so a reddish paste will precipitate out, probably a dark purple paste, I'm guessing. Uh, we'll add, well, I'll, I'll come back when the substance has now cooled to about room temperature in a normal water bath, okay? So that's just the water bath and we'll let that uh, continue cooling to room temperature. I noticed something kind of interesting I thought you might like to take a look at. Um, as this guy is precipitating out, I'm not sure if you can see this. But you know how like if you leave something moldy in your refrigerator and you get those spots appearing that look kind of like gross looking? Um, that's how these crystals are forming. There's little spots that are imitating out as fuzzy little balls <laughs> and uh, expanding throughout the flask. It's still cooling down and we'll still let this keep on cooling down and uh, we'll, we'll bring you back. Don't worry, fast forward to when it's ready.
Okay, here we are at this stage where um, you can see how the uh, substance has uh, massively precipitated and it basically occupies the whole volume here. So we're asked to put a little ethanol in there to kind of make it a slurry, like a slushy, so that we could possibly pour it and uh, do a filtration. So let me go ahead and take you over to the uh, filtration apparatus and we'll go ahead and uh, get this stuff isolated. Uh, sorry, I lied. Uh, let me just take you through a little bit of a theory first. Remember that uh, benzopinacol is a substance that has two hydroxyl groups, okay? Because of the nature of the two hydroxyl groups, this can perform hydrogen bond accepting and hydrogen bond donating to acetic acid. which has an OH bond, so it can perform uh, hydrogen bonding to uh, this guy here. So OH, OH, right? The uh, birds of a feather flock together, like dissolves like. You would expect acetic acid to sol solubilize this guy here, which is the starting material, extremely well. Now when this reacts, you form a ketone. This ketone does not have any OH groups. All it can do is possibly do hydrogen bonding, um, accepting to the acetic acid, okay? I'll draw one such interaction here, okay? So it has no OH groups, all right? And it only has one oxygen. You see here you have two, all right? So you would expect this one to be much more polar, much more hydrogen bonding, much more soluble in acetic acid. Over here, uh, we have only one carbonyl, which is a, a less polar kind of group than a hydroxyl group, okay? The OH bond is the most polar bond in this whole molecule, the OH bond. Here, we don't have an OH bond, we just have a carbon-oxygen pi bond, okay? So you have no OH, you just have one oxygen. So in a nutshell, this is much uh, less soluble, and that's why the product uh, is insoluble in acetic acid when uh, it's at room room temperature okay all right so once again we're back at the filtration apparatus you've seen this a million times sidearm gets plugged into the uh, sidearm here we get the water going at a sufficient uh, velocity here to aspirate create suction okay uh, it's kind of splashing around but i think that's good enough for me now we're supposed to uh, rinse and do some things with this 95% uh, ethyl alcohol, so we'll go ahead and, you know, do that here. It's supposed to be 95%, so I'm going to just stick some water in there, okay, to make it... 95%. So, we want to add just a bit of, uh, so this is like three milliliters. I'll add uh, three milliliters of ethanol in, into that flask to try to uh, loosen the solid. I'll use a glass stirring rod to uh, just kind of make it a slushy. I don't even think I needed to do that. So it, it's kind of loosened up in there, okay? Now we've got our uh, qualitative sense seven centimeter filter papers, okay? And uh, we'll just wet the filter paper a little bit with our ethanol solution. And uh, I feel it very strongly being pulled down onto the holes of the Buchner funnel, okay? So now we'll go ahead and uh, I think I need a little bit more ethanol. I'll add two more milliliters of ethanol to this uh, flask. Okay, and now it's kind of a, more of a, a, a slushy there, okay? And uh, in one fell swoop here, I'll just pour it on, okay? I will continue rinsing the flask to transfer all of the material to my 
filtration set up here, okay? So that's a second wash. third wash so it's getting cleaner in there and we'll do that one last uh, one last time there is some uh, bit there but that's actually on the outside of the uh, flask and I'm not worried about trying to get a hundred percent yield here now when I look at the uh, substance here it's largely devoid of uh, color but I'm gonna go ahead and just rinse the sides here and rinse the top here with a uh, few more squirts of uh, ethanol. So I'll rinse this uh, stirring rod and I'll let, let the uh, ethanol kind of explore the, the whole surface here of my uh, crystals, okay? I'll let the liquid fully aspirate down and pass on through before I add the next bit here. Okay. This is not a recrystallization. I'm just washing the crude substance of uh, any possible iodine or anything that's soluble in aqueous ethanol. The main thing I wanna get rid of is acetic acid. Acetic acid has a boiling point of 131 or 130, I think it is. It has a very high uh, boiling point, but ethanol boils at 78, if I remember correctly. So uh, it's much easier for ethanol to evaporate and dry, okay? So we'll go ahead and let this sit uh, on the uh, water aspirator here for about 10 minutes to air dry. I'll transfer this to a watch glass, and hopefully this very same day in the afternoon, it'll be dry enough for us to uh, way analyze get a yield get a melting point all right you won't sit and watch this on the video i'll fast forward and bring you back all right so that's where we'll stop this video here i'll bring you back when i'm actually weighing the dried substance all right so take it easy stay in touch okay for the weighing step i have a uh, watch glass here um, the substance not is not dry yet, so uh, what we're going to do is just weigh the empty um, watch glass, you know, clean, dry, basically tearing it, okay? So write this number down here in your lab notebook, and what I'm going to do is uh, carefully transfer the material to the watch glass, and uh, it's not uh, dry yet, but... Um, we want it to, you know, I'm just gonna weigh the filter cake, so to speak. It's a lot easier to remove the crystals when it's when it's all dry. So I'm just gonna kind of just uh, leave that on, on top like that. But I do wanna get around the perimeter here. And uh, it's kind of pasty, uh, so it's not yet dry, so. The only purpose of this video is to uh, give you the mass of the watch glass so you can subtract it. Of course, I will remove the filter paper so we don't need to think about the filter paper, okay? But uh, once again, it's it's still, you can see how it's clinging to my spatula there, okay? So there's a faint uh, pink kind of color to this. Probably some residual iodine is still trapped in the material here in some way. Maybe it'll lighten up after I dry it. Okay, so so once again, two hours or tomorrow, we'll get the dry weight. All right.